So we've already seen that um, for any given surface, for any given surface, we can identify the critical points. And uh, once we've got the critical points, we can apply the second derivative test to identify if it's a, um, a local min, a local max, or a saddle point. In this video and in the next video, I'm going to give you the proof of the second derivative test. In this video, I'm going to gloss over the proof. In the next video, I will we'll take it step by step. Okay, so um, so this is the second derivative test, but ignore this. I've summar I've summarized it to um, to this. So we're gonna we're going to try and understand where this whole thing where this whole thing comes from. Okay. So the trick to understanding the second derivative test is to look at the the directional derivative of a directional derivative. So um so so let me just remind you of what a directional derivative is. So uh let's say you're standing on top of this hill. So you've got your unit a vector. It could be in any direction. It can be in the negative, it can be in the positive. Remember it's of magnitude 1. So you've got your unit vector, your which is your direction in effect. So let's say you are looking in this direction. So this is your your unit vector. So this is your unit vector. So if if you're working with this unit vector, then uh then you would draw a straight line in that direction. And then you've got your vertical plane. So I'm just reminding you um you you we've done this many times of the um I'm reminding you of the directional derivative. So you've got your vertical sheet of paper. Um, where it intersects with the surface, it will look something like this, and uh, it will look something like this. And then, when you look at this um, this sheet of paper head on, it will look something like this. So, uh, so the directional derivative, the directional derivative, gives you the gradient at any point that you want to work with. Here it's at the or origin. It could be anywhere. It could be at any point. It could be at any point. But here we're just looking at the origin for simplicity. So the directional derivative uh, gives you the gradient. If you if you take the directional derivative of a dire directional deri derivative, it gives you the concavity. So remember from single calculus, if you have um, y equals negative x squared, uh, differentiate it, dy by dx equals negative 2x, that gives you the gradient, differentiate it again, this is from single calculus, um, differentiate it again, that will give you negative 2, a negative concavity means it's going to always bend, it, it always wants to bend downwards, you, you're gonna, it's going to bend downwards, here you're bending downwards, so um, uh, a positive concavity concavity it means it will always bend upwards so if you're here if you if you take the um, directional derivative the, if you take the directional derivative of a directional derivative you're actually looking at the concavity so if if you're here if if you're if you head in this direction you're you're always going to concave down if you head in this direction you're always going to concave down if you head in this direction you're always going to concave down so so the proof lies in the fact that no matter which direction you head in so so this unit vector could be in, in any direction so let's just say this represents um the unit vector um it a, it doesn't matter what a and b are meaning it doesn't matter which direction you head in you're always going to concave down let's just say you're not at the at the top let's just say you're here you're currently standing you're currently standing here um, here it won't work because um, let's let's just say you are currently here, straight up you're here. Um, so so you head in in all directions here. No matter which direction in uh, you head in, well, if you head in this direction, it's going to concave down. If you head in this direction, it's going to concave up, and so on. So it doesn't work in this case. In this case, the concavity is always negative. So if you um, if you're standing at Let's just say you're at the bottom of this hill. Um, well, not it's not a hill; it's some sort of valley. Let's just say you're at the bottom here. If you um, if you head in all directions, so your unit vector could be anything. So this is A and B. It could be anything. Um, here, if you look at the concavity, it always it's always going to be positive, meaning it's always going to concave up. 
And then if you look at the saddle point, let's say you're you're at this saddle point here. Um, so remember, this is uh, th this has a, an elevation of zero. It's where z equals zero. So you're currently at the origin here. So your unit vector could be in any direction. Your unit vector could be in any direction. Remember, unit vectors of magnitude one. So um, if you if you take this direction, for instance, you you you're gonna you're going to concave up. So if you work out if you work out the directional derivative of a directional um, derivative, um, it's going to be positive. If if you head in this direction, if you head in this direction, you can see that you're going to have a negative concavity. So um, so here here um, here the concavity depends on the direc direction that you're heading in. Up here. It doesn't matter which direction you head in, you're always going the concavity is always down. No matter no matter which direction you head in, the concavity is going to be negative. Here, no matter which direction you head in, the concavity is always going to be positive. The saddle point depends on which direction you head in. Sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative. So um so the trick to understanding this is to look at the Directional derivative of a directional derivative, but but the thing is, um, when in the next video I will take it step by step and show you the mathematics behind it. But when you when you uh, when you f try and find the directional derivative of a directional derivative, for some reason a quadratic crops up. So you've got a quadratic, and this here is just a constant. So you've got a um, a quadratic. So this is your A here. For some reason, this crops up, which I will show you in the next video. Uh, this is your B here, and this is your constant here. Um, this T here, we, we would invent a new variable to represent something else. But the point is that when you try and work this out, um, for some reason, a quadratic crops up. So um, so if you're trying to work out the, the direct, the, <coughs> excuse me, if you're trying to work out the directional derivative of a directional derivative, this equals this weird thing here. So this is your quadratic. Remember from high school, um, if this thing is positive, you're going to get two solutions. If this thing, if this thing here is positive, let's say, if this thing here is positive, you're going to get two solutions. You're going to get two solutions. If things, if this thing here is negative, you're not going to get a solution. Or it could be this thing here. So if the directional derivative equals this, remember at the moment you don't understand where this comes from. In the next video, I'll explain. So the direction, the um, the, the directional derivative of a directional deriv derivative equals this. Well, this thing here depends on depends on these depends on these here. So uh, so if you if you have this equals this, hang on. So um, it doesn't matter what. Remember, a is your unit vector. Um, if it, it doesn't matter which a or it doesn't matter wh what a and b are, if the if the um, if the second derivative is always positive, then you know you're at the maximum because the concavity is always positive. If you if you get a quadratic in this form, you know you know. Remember, this thing here equals this thing here. Well, if this thing here is always negative, then then it means that it's always concaving downwards. So if it's concaving downwards, then you know you're at the, the maximum. You're at a local maximum. Um, and if if you get if you if this quadratic has two solutions, let's just say this thing here. Let's just say it has this. So um, so this this means you're at a saddle point because um, remember this thing here equals this. And this thing here, let's just say we've got a scenario where you have two solutions, one, two. So if you look at your unit vector, sometimes it's positive. That sometimes the concavity is positive. So it, some. So if you head in this direction, it concaves up, and then for, if you head in this direction, it concaves down. So it's in the negative. So sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative. That's why you're going to get a saddle point here. Um, and then if you if you look at this, hang on. So if this thing here is positive, if this thing here is positive, you're going to get two solutions. 
you're going to get two solutions here and here meaning that this thing here will sometimes be positive sometimes it will be negative so if you if you make this to be always positive so remember this is our b and and I'm, I'm just glossing over it, this. It doesn't matter if you don't understand it. In the next video, I will take it step by step. Um, this is your C, and this is your your A. So uh, this is your A, this is your B, and this is your C. If you look at this thing here, if, if this thing here is positive, B squared. If this thing here is positive, um, if this thing minus... 4ac, 4ac. Um, if this thing here is positive, meaning it's bigger than zero, then uh, then hang on. Let let me uh, let me multiply this out. That would be 4fxy minus 4fxx, uh, fyy greater than zero. Divide everything by by um, by four. That would be this x y oh forgot this um, and then minus uh, f x x y y so you divide everything by four and then uh, hang on let me think and then and then multiply everything by negative one uh, multiply everything by the by negative one so that would then be um, uh, f pos this thing here would be positive x x f y y um, minus this thing here fx squared and then the sign switches around because you're you're dividing by a negative number so so here you can see that's where this thing comes from and then uh, and then if, if you demand this to be uh, an, to be if you demand this to be negative then you're, you're not going to have a solution it could be this or it could be this so if you demand this to be negative it will hang on let's demand this to be negative so we demand b squared we demand this thing here to be negative hang on squared uh, minus 4 4 um, ac oh we did it earlier well if you demand this to be um, to be negative then then it's going to lead you to this thing here and this thing here but then um, but then if if you remember if this thing here is negative then then your quadratic will be upside down that's why you demand if, if it's upside down then you know it's going to be uh, this thing here that's why if you demand the quadratic to be negative uh, that would then give you this and then if you demand this to be positive then you know you know you're gonna get this thing here that would lead you to this thing here I'm remember I'm just glossing over this it doesn't matter if you don't understand it in the next video I will take it step by step Okay?